Thank you. I now recognize myself for as much time as I may consume for questions, with equal time being afforded to the ranking member of the committee. Uh, you know, the question is asked, did the federal government require that, that, that the state of New York mandate that its nursing homes admit or readmit residents? The answer is no. Did the federal government mandate that your state issue a directive that prohibited a nursing home from testing an, ad, an admitted or readmitted resident for COVID-19? The answer is no. In fact, I don't believe I'm aware of any other state besides yours that expressly prohibited a nursing home from testing, returning, or newly admitted residents. Only, only in New York. The other states that, that have been alleged issued similar orders, none were in place as long as New York. So many states reverse course. And I surmise because it doesn't take a doctor to realize that it was a dangerous, misguided plan. Nevertheless, Governor, you've maintained and testified to us since the pandemic, that your directive was based on and consistent with CMS and CDC guidelines. You're a lawyer, so you know the difference between permissive versus prescriptive language, I assume. Uh, and, and the word shall and must, it, are they permissive or prescriptive? Governor, are the words shall and must permissive or prescriptive? It depends on the context. Okay. Well, those words are right in, in the directive. This was not advisory or guidance. You have also claimed that the directive followed CMS and CDC guidance. Did you ever speak with anyone at CMS or CDC about the directive beforehand? You'd have to ask the, the uh, Department of Health had those conversations. So what you're saying is you did not ever speak with anyone at CMS or CDC about the directive beforehand. I I'm asking you. I can ask them later, but I'm I spoke you. to the CMS and CDC about a number of matters. Did I you don't speak to I... them about the directive beforehand, your directive? I did not speak to them about this directive okay. to the best of my recollection. Not even after? After the directive, did you speak with them? To the best of my recollection, no. Okay. Nor did they speak with me. N not even to ensure that what no, you No, they were... never called. Okay. In fact, no one we interviewed said they consulted, they consulted with them to ensure the applicable science was being followed. Former White House Coronavirus Coordinator, Dr. Deborah Burks, she was in charge of all federal guidance in 2020. She testified that your order absolutely violated CMS guidance. Is it your position that Dr. Burks lied? My position is you deceived Dr. Burks. You suggested to Dr. Burks that we did not have transmission-based precautions in place, and that was not true. As you know, the Attorney General conducted this investigation. This is not new news. These charges were made four years ago. You then had three Department of Justice investigations that reviewed them. You then had an Attorney General's investigation that reviewed them. The Attorney General, of New York, who governs the New York law and interprets the New York law, found exactly contrary to what you are saying and said it repeatedly. And you know she said it repeatedly. She said, quote, the March 25th advisory did not require admission of COVID-19 patients into nursing homes, but rather said the admission could not be denied solely, solely, Miriam Webster says that means only on the basis of the COVID diagnosis. The Attorney General said while some commentators, and these were Republican commentators she was referring to, suggested Department of Health March 25th guidance was a directive that nursing homes accept COVID-19 patients even if they could not care for them such an interpretation would violate statutes and regulations that place obligations on nursing homes to care for residents. The March 25th guidance was consistent with the CMS guidance. The March 25th guidance was consistent with the CMS guidance. If nursing homes have the ability to adhere to infection prevention and control recommendations, it was also consistent with CDC published transmission-based precautions. That's the Attorney General's position and opinion. And that's the law of the state of New York. And when you spoke to Dr. Burks, 
you posed the question suggesting we did not have infection protections in place, and that was not true. Mr. Cuomo, you're a lawyer, so you know the difference between permissive versus prescriptive language, I assume. Uh, in, in a context, I will interpret it for you. As the Attorney the General shall. did here. Thank As you. the Attorney General did here. Yeah. Are the words shall and must permissive or prescriptive? Depends on the context. In this context, the nursing homes were not directed to accept anyone. So the, it was the, up to the discretion of the nursing home. That was made abundantly clear. All the laws of the state of New York remained in effect. As a matter of fact, the law of the state of New York says they can only accept people who they can care for. The law of the state of New York says they have to do a full diagnosis before a person comes in. If they have a communicable disease, they have to have a written letter saying the person is not infectious or an infection plan in place. So every law in the state of New York governing nursing homes was in effect, sir. Well, Governor, there might be a lot of lawyers who disagree with you. Um, using the Attorney the word, General using the, it's my, it's, Excuse me. Using the word shall and must. These words are right here in the directive. This was not advisory or guidance. It wasn't. You have also claimed that the directive followed CMS and CDC guidance. Did you ever speak with anyone at CMS or CDC about the directive beforehand? The Attorney General said it follows CMS guidance and is consistent with CMS guidance. When you talk about attorneys, yes, I'm an attorney. Yes, I'm the former Attorney General of New York. But the law is interpreted by the current Attorney General. That is how she interpreted the law. That is the law that was in place. That was the law that was in place during the pandemic. She has sued nursing homes for uh, misconduct during the pandemic based on that Thank law. Thank you, Governor. My question was, did you ever speak with anyone, you, Governor Cuomo, did you ever speak with anyone at CMS or at CDC about the directive beforehand, you, Governor Cuomo. I, well, you asked that question, and I answered the question, and I Did said no. Did you or not? I said no. I answered the okay, question. Okay, thank no. you. Not even after, correct? I said yes, and they never called me after. You would think if they had a problem with the directive, they would have called. If it was you so outrageous, you, as you didn't suggest, even call they to. Have called. You didn't even call to ensure that you were what you were declaring was accurate. Yes or no? I don't know if the Department of Health. Did you, which issued Governor Cuomo? Right now, I'm talking to you, Governor yes. Cuomo. The, Did you even attempt to ensure that what you were declaring was accurate? I'm asking you. Yes, I, I don't understand. want to hear about anyone else. Okay. Department of Health issued 400 advisories, several per day. I did not speak Thank to you. CMS about 400 advisors. Thank you. In fact, no one we interviewed said they consulted with them to ensure the applicable science was being followed. Former White House Coronavirus Coordinator Dr. Deborah Burke, she was in charge of all federal guidance in 2020. She testified that your order absolutely violated CMS guidance. Is it your position that Dr. Burke's lied? You misrepresented the I'm facts asking a question. Dr. I'm Burks. stating what she said. I'm not misrepresenting anything. She, well, what, because this is what she said, and I just want you, I'm asking you if Dr. Burks lied. That's my question. Dr. Burks said that the March 25th advisory, which you read to her in your words, didn't have appropriate infection control procedures. That was by your representation. The Attorney General's representation is the law of the state of New York was in effect, which has an infection control plan, mandates they only accept people who they can handle, mandates that if the person is a communicable disease, that it's treated before they accept the person or they don't. So the infection-based control precautions were in place. If you, the question to Dr. Burks was, uh, would you allow admission 
if there were no transmission-based precautions? And she said, no. And I would agree, but they were in place. So many states reverse course. And I surmise because it doesn't take a doctor to realize this is a dangerous, misguided plan taking place in New York. Nevertheless, Governor, you maintain and testified to us since the pandemic that your directive was based on and consistent with CMS and CDC guidelines. And you're a lawyer, so you know the difference between permissive versus prescriptive language, I assume. Are the words shall and must permissive or prescriptive? It's not my lawyer. It's the Attorney General of the State of New York who interprets the law. That's how the law works, sir. I now recognize the ranking member, Dr. Reeves, from California for five minutes of questions. 